Hey everybody and welcome to Bible Talk from the Green Room. Today we are in Commands of Jesus. We're on command number 18. It says, do not be angry. Trust God's providence. Let's see what the book has to say here. It says again and again, we have seen that Jesus commands what we by ourselves cannot do. Sometimes, as with the command to love or to believe, we try to make commands doable by defining them as more external acts or mere decisions of the will. We think these are more in our control than our emotions are, perhaps. But when it comes to anger, Jesus explicitly does the opposite of what we try to do in making his commands more external and more doable. He's saying that the external act of murder is wrong and more radically that the internal experience of anger behind it is wrong. So he commands, along with the law of Moses, that we do ex that we do not do external acts of murder, but goes further and commands that we not feel internal emotion of anger that lies behind that act. No one decides to get angry, and that's a radical thought. Have you ever really sat there and thought about it? Do you decide to get angry or does it just happen? When we look at it, something happens and anger just rises up in our hearts and we lash out at people. Jesus commanded us, though, not to do that, to have self-control um, in that and to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you and change you. It says his demand is that there be a change in our condition. He is calling for a deep inward transformation of mind and heart that does not give rise to the anger we should not have. He describes this change in different ways. For example, in command number one, he talked about our new birth in Christ. In command number two, he talked about our repentance, which we talked about many times on here. That is when the Holy Spirit is in us and our heart changes then our mind begins to change and we think about things in a different way and then our actions change. It is a continual process there. Um, some things instantly you may have control over in your life because God grants that to you, but some things it make time, may take time. And so that repentance, um, yes, it does mean to go the other way, but you go the other way because your heart changes and that changes your mind and that changes your actions there. And then the fourth uh, command, we talked about Jesus telling us to have faith. And in this example, having faith, he's going to calm us down and get us through the situation there. It says Jesus is not merely interested in physiological or emotional change. He's interested in newborn disciples who live by faith in his saving work and present help. It says the standard English uh, definition of anger is a strong feeling of displeasure and usually antagonism. We could have a strong displeasure of some food that doesn't taste bad, but that doesn't necessarily make us angry in that. Um, there may be a strong displeasure there, but sometimes if somebody's poking and prodding you, Hey, why don't you say something about it? Why don't you tell the cook or the waiter how bad it is? Well, this is terrible. I can't believe we're spending this money to do this. That's when that anger tends to rear up and raise its head, and then we lash out there. Um, this talks about love and anger. For human anger to be good, it must be governed by the love of those who make us angry. Um, it says, Jesus told us here. Here's some examples. Love your enemies and pray for those who perk execute you do good to those who hate you bless those who cursed you um, jesus tells us over and over and over to do that to show love in the time that we as humans want to lash out and be angry he's telling us to love for people and to pray for people and and to look at it that way and when we have that heart and and that uh, aim and purpose that tends to lower the level of anger that we would have in us or completely get rid of it. Our anger should be governed not only by our love for the ones who make us angry, but by the seriousness of the offense. If our anger is out of proportion to the offense, it's not good anger. Now, here's an example of this, and guys, I want you to pay attention to this because I've lived it. 
when we deal with spouses or children or even in the workplace for for men or women anybody in a leadership position there um but at home i want you to think about this you know you've had a bad day you come in the house and say your wife has done something left the door standing wide open left the light on in the garage whatever it may be and you just lash out angry and mad and upset her you do a couple things there number one it's not proportional to the offense they left the light on so what go cut it off you know don't even say anything about it but when you lash out and go crazy it breaks down the trust uh with your spouse there and just think about what it does to your children when they see that it starts building walls up and i was guilty of doing this in my life you lash out over things that there's nothing even to be mad about but people begin to build up walls and before long people won't even communicate with you because they think if the slightest thing happens this person is going to lash out so what God teaches us here and what Jesus says in the scriptures is as these things come up and people offend us, pray for them. When you pray for them, that's like taking your anger and putting it in neutral or even reverse. It makes you have a different heart and a different thought. If somebody pulls out in front of you and makes you, man, God, I pray that person has a good day today. Lord, I pray that person gets where they're going and that when they get there, they make a positive impact on somebody's life. And I hope that you're involved in that conversation. When we do that, just by mentioning the name God or Jesus, that disengages our heart and makes us have a different attitude. Now, that's not something you're going to do overnight. That's something that's going to take time to do as the Holy Spirit works in you and tones down your heart and begins to change you. That anger won't be... Uh, as prevalent as it may have been in a prior life here. It says, one of the clearest illustrations of God's providence overcomes a controlling uh, effect of anger is Jesus commanded we rejoice when we're persecuted unjustly. He says, blessed are others, uh, blessed are you when others revel you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil uh, against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And that's Matthew 5, 11, and 12. And that's something that we're going to leave on, you know. As as people make you mad and people prod you and on that, disengage. Pray about it. Love those people. Love them through those situations. And if you begin to put this into practice in your life day after day, and as you're praying, and the more you pray for others, I think the more your heart changes and God works in you and makes you a different person. Doesn't mean you're still not going to have times when things make you angry when they shouldn't make you angry. Um, but when that happens, make, you, make sure it's in proportion to what happens. But pray through that situation. And here's the last thing I'm going to leave with on anger. When anger does happen and those situations come as fast as you can, go seek forgiveness from people. Go tell them you're sorry. Um, go tell them to work with you and to help you get over your anger. Your family and your friends, they tend to be the ones that we're the meanest to and the roughest to. And it seems like those that we love the most, we lash out the most against. But we got to remember, you know, aside from the Holy Spirit working in us, those that are closest to us have the greatest impact on helping us change. If we will allow those people to pray for us, to pray with us if we will allow those people to talk to us when they see us in situations or getting ready to be in situations that they've known to trigger anger. Allow those people to intervene and step in and grab you by the hand and say, let's not go there. This is not good. We can't put ourselves in this situation because you get angry. And as you begin to identify those things and as you begin to see that people are there for you, You'll continue to make change in your life and anger will become a thing of the past and not be something you're defined by. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Make sure, make sure, make sure that you make mental health a priority. Do a self-check today. Check on those around you. Uh, like and share this video. Somebody else needs to hear this and I hope you'll send it to them and I hope they're blessed by it. 
Thank you for tuning in. I love you all. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next time.